a really nice warm sleeping bag in here so uh, I feel as snug as a bug in a mug. Now it's absolutely pitch black at the moment and the reason that you've been able to see stuff so far and you can see me now is because our camera crew have got the lights with them but now that it's bedtime it's time to turn the lights out so uh, oh here goes good night. Ray? Yeah? Did you hear something? Good night Connie. It's so exciting being in the forest. Um, it's really quiet. I thought I'd be hearing lots of weird animal noises, but there aren't any really. Though it is raining now, so I can hear the rain on the roof of my little forest bedroom. But um, anyway, hopefully I'm going to have some sleep now. But I've got a feeling that this is not the last time I shall be talking to you tonight. It's getting light now. I didn't really sleep, in fact I didn't sleep at all, and now it's light, I can't sleep, um, and there's loads of birds just singing everywhere, but the rain stopped. Oh. oh, it's the opening. Good morning. I tell you what, it has been morning for so long. It's been daylight for ages and I've just been swaying here and listening to the birds and the rain because that's what kind of kept me up a lot of the night is just drumming on the roof. It wasn't too uncomfy once I uh, got into a good position, but I tell you what, I don't think that's deterred Ray at all because he is just out like a light, his hammock is just completely still. But out in the wilderness there's no time for a lion. First thing to do, Connie, is to actually check to see whether the fire might be still going. Mm. And I'll do that with my hand just to feel for a bit where there's some warmth there. So there's still some embers. Oh look, it's glowing. Yep. So what are you actually doing there? Well, Connie, we call these logs left in the morning, fire dogs, and there's a little bit of life in the fire, and if I blow the ash away and give it a little bit more air, like that, it starts to burn again. Wow, that is so clever. So Connie, what we're going to need is some small sticks. Okay. We just collect a big, big bundle of them from around here. Okay. Forest living, huh? Hey, Ray. I've That's got this great, brilliant. Assortment of Thank you. You see the way that smoke is clinging to the ground at the moment? Yeah. When you have a, a slow fire like that and the smoke clings to the ground, it normally means that there's rain in the air. Mm. Well, we've had a little bit of rain, but it probably means there's more coming. Mm. That, well, these are good. And um, I've got one other job for you now, and that is to collect some water with that can there. If you go down to the stream, which is, you'll hear it just over there, what you need to look for is some nice, clear, flowing water and just get nice, clean water. Consider it done, boss. Okay. Right, here we go. Now, I know the water looks orange, but that's algae and the secret of collecting water is just to put the edge of the can under the surface and that way it doesn't get any algae in. Oh, look at that, algae free, nice. Once the water was on the fire and up to the boil, there was just time for a cup of hot chocolate and some very sticky porridge before the downside of camping, packing up. Did he? Take that, take your hammock. Connie and put that straight away into the bag that comes with it so that uh, it doesn't get damaged by anything. Oh, you don't yeah. want to get a hole in a mosquito. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Steam coming up there. Look. The good thing is because we've burned off all the wood. There are no, no fire dogs left, which is perfect. Now, I use my hand. It's the only way I can be certain that the fire is What's well that? out. If you use your foot? No, because I need to feel that all the ashes are cold. If you put your hand in there, just feel that's warm. We can also see now the damage the fire's caused to the ground. It's a little bit of damage there. We can put that right, that's, that's easy to put right. But we can also see that there's no rubbish left in our fire, like tin foil or anything like that. It's just the last job. Even where we've been sitting, look, I tried to tidy that up as well. Good work, Ray. Because I like to leave it, so it only looks like a deer has been sitting here, nothing more. What do you reckon? I mean, that's pretty good, isn't it? That is brilliant. You, you'd hardly know anybody had been there. Yeah, nice job, Ray. Good one, Connie. <laughs> one problem, though, dirty hands. Do you know the tree that helped us start the fire, the birch tree? Uh -huh. That'll help us clean our hands, too. But I'm also going to leave some leaves so it can carry on growing all right. We're going to need a good handful of these each. These are silver birch leaves. We'll take those with us. So I've got a handful of those silver birch leaves, and I take a little bit of water with them, rub them together like that, and I squeeze, and we get, you see that's frothy. Mm. That's actually a natural soap. Mm. Look. Wow, yeah. People would go to posh shops to get these natural soaps, wouldn't they? I think they would. I don't know how it is for you, but for me, there's a joy even in, in clearing up the fire, in that we come, we enjoy a campfire in the evening, and in the morning we get rid of it, and the forest even provides us with the soap. Oh, somehow that's, that's neat, isn't it's it? It's cool, isn't it? What do you reckon, Connie? Mm -hmm. Have I been able to persuade you that the woods is a comfortable place to live? Yeah, I like it. It feels like a home. That's great. I think you've done really well. While Connie had been converted to life without a roof over her head, Matt and I were checking out living arrangements Anglo-Saxon.